got a lot to talk about, man. Anyway, welcome back to the channel. I don't even know how long it's gonna be up. Brad's OTR experience. Oh. Okay, so we're gonna start my preacher because I got something to say. Bam, preacher started. And done. Uh, it's 8 o'clock. I need to get on the road. Okay, so. When I last left you, I was doing a reset in Reno, uh, California. No, Reno, Nevada. <clears throat> so I was doing a reset in Reno, Nevada. You know, I told you about the $12,000 I spent on the truck. Oh, and I'm going to show you some of the things that you can tell that they replaced. Um, but anyway, so I left Saturday morning, 8 o'clock, right about what time it is now. You know, I went down, I'm on 95, well, I'm going through the desert, cutting down towards Las Vegas, right? And all is fine and dandy, you know, it was like 70 degrees, windows down, had the AC on cool, just cruising, you know, doing 66, because I know I got to hit some mountains. And then I run to a guy in Tonopah, another Mercer driver, and we spent the next two and a half hours chatting, going down towards Las Vegas. Now, I'm not going to get to all of that. We talked about a lot. Um, as soon as we got into Las Vegas, I was telling him about the stuff that I had come to my truck. And I said, you know, it'd be messed up if my AC went out, right? So he's going to San Antonio, I'm going to Houston, and we're trying to find a place to stop. We stopped at Roadies on Interstate 11, right outside of Las Vegas. He's getting diesel. I'm just going to go ahead. I had two hours left. I'm going to stay here because I don't have enough hours to get down to the Petro. So I'm idling at the Roadies because it's nice and cold. It's 100 degrees. Well, actually, it got up to like 105, according to my truck temp. It got up to 105. Um, so I was sitting there idling. It was like 5 o'clock. And I'm back there on my, on my phone. And I just keep thinking to myself, can I make it? Can I make it? Because I had like 2 hours and 45 minutes or something like that. And when I was looking at truckers' path to that petrol, it was only 100 miles. But I know I had to go up and down those mountains, right? <clears throat> so anyway, I get to my truck. I, I, I come over here to the on the tracks and I check the time. Bam! I got three hours and ten minutes. Oh, oh, three hours and ten minutes. Okay, so maybe I can make this. And my truck is island. I'm cool. It's cold in here, so I get up. Open up the windows and I drive around, get 50 gallons of diesel. But I shut off my truck, because I always shut off my truck. Well, I've learned one time when a truck is uh, running and I'm getting diesel, it doesn't vibrate a lot, but one time it vibrated enough and it didn't stay in there, then it fell out and I scored diesel. I scored, I scored, I poured diesel all over the I spilled diesel all over the place. So I cut my truck off. The lady in there was flirting with me. I think she won this song. I really do. But I have standards. <clears throat> so, get back in my truck, turn it on, and I go down the road, right? And it's blowing warm air. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna take some time. I get pissed, man. My AC's gone. That quick, my AC's gone. And the whole time I'm cutting it on, cutting it off, waiting to see if the fan's gonna keep on. Because you know when it's hot, you turn on the AC, the the fan automatically kicks on, right? Because, because it's hot air and it has to go through the com compressor and the Freon to get the cold air. And that's pretty much what I know how it works. But it wouldn't do that. But my fan was kicking on when the temperature was getting too hot. So, I'm driving two hours. And by the time... I got to Uber Dam, it was like 98 degrees. But going up and down those miles, man, I'm pissed. I'm in my mind thinking like, what in the hell just happened? I 
couldn't have lost antifreeze because I'm driving. No lights are on, no warning buzzers, no dash of death. So I'm good. Then I'm thinking, wait a minute. I had an AC problem last time. So I checked over here, right, to see if I was leaking water. Wasn't leaking water. So I'm like, well, I had pretty much everything in place. I had the, the condenser filter or the whatever that little round tube or thing that's in the firewall. I had that replaced. Um, they checked the leaks. So my AC was good since last year, July. As y'all don't remember, I made a video about that, but my stupid butt deleted my channel because I got in my feelings, right? Because I wasn't really gaining popularity. But we're not going to talk about that. Um, so the only thing I could think of was my compressor because my compressor was good. So I finally get on 93. It's flat. I'm calling. I'm calling that TA right there at 40 and 93. And I asked them if they have an AC compressor. They're like, well, we need to look at it. Like, Why do y'all always need to look at a pack car engine? So then I called the petrol because that's what I'm going to stop. He's like, we have some, but we, you know, we just got to check and make sure. So I'm driving. I get down to the TA. I pass him up. Uh, now at the stoplight, I tried the AC again. I cut it on. And all of a sudden, boom. I got a little hint of cool air. But then as I started driving, it started blowing hot again. So I'm like, I'm pissed, right? And so then I get to the petrol. I stop. The guy says, okay, you're the guy. I'm like, yeah, so it comes. He leaks on my truck. He can't tell. So another guy's got to look at it. Meanwhile, while I'm here at the petrol, I get on the CD, right, saying, like, Mercy, man, you still here? Yep, he's here. They can't get to him to this morning. So right now he's at speed call, which if you know... 40, the petrol on 40 in Arizona, the speed go right across the street. So he told me to call them and find out if uh, they do AC work. So I called speed call. And he was like, yeah, yeah, man, we got we have AC compressors for pretty much every type of truck you got. I'm like, are you sure? It's the pack our engine. He's like, yeah, we can because they're interchangeable. I'm like, what? I ain't never heard that before. Anyway, um, I know I'm rushing through this because I'm hungry. And I, get, and I want to show you something. Um, what was I saying? So I gave them the number that was on my... Uh, and they were getting ready to close. So I gave them the number. It was like, yeah, that's, that's Packard specific. I said I had it. I'm Packard engine, Packard parts. MX-13. It was like, yeah, we just come in in the morning. And then um, we can get you a, a compressor. So... I'm inside the, uh, the petrol, right? And the guy's looking at it. And then something's like, I started Googling, like, Ken works near me. Because I was going to get the part number. And I was going to buy it while I was en route to Houston. I said, Ken works near me. Closed, right? Las Vegas is the closest one. So I said, Ken works that are open. El Paso pops up 24 7. So I called El Paso to get a part number, right? I call him. He's like, yo, man, hold on, man. I, I'm, you know, I said, uh, he said, how can I help? I said, I'm looking for a part number for an AC compressor. He said, all right. Now, meanwhile, I'm inside of the petrol bay. Hood open, waiting for the guys to look at it. Come on. <clears throat> Let's go check my uh, straps. So, meanwhile, I, uh, I am going to, I can't do two things at once. I don't know why. What was I saying? Oh, so he was on the phone with other people helping them. And then he, he got off, he, he finished up. He was like, all right, how can I help you? I got to tighten this shit up again. He said, how can I help you? I'm looking for a part number for the, uh, for the AC compressor. And it was like, well, I got a few minutes, man. I can help you. So let's 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 figure out what's going on. Now, while he's talking to me, the people are looking at my at my uh, compressor. And oh, did I show you this? Did I show you that I had this right here strapped? And then I got this back here. So it hasn't been moved, but look how close it is. All right. Look how close it is. Well, I tell you. Anyway, 
So, he was just telling me how the compressor, the AC compressor works. And, and I was telling him what was going on. Like, I had AC, but I didn't have any more AC. And I'm guessing it's the compressor because the compressor was the last thing that I haven't changed. All right? <clears throat> so, he told me to, um, first things first, he told me to cut on the truck and, and cut on the compressor the AC and see if the clutch is engaged, right? So I had the guy look at it and I cut it on and I, uh, I actuated the uh, the AC button, right? And the clutch is on. And then all of a sudden I started feeling cool air. So this is what happened, right? All right, so this is your compressor. And then this is your clutch right here. I'm gonna see if I can prop this. Well, anyway, so this is the clutch. Not this whole thing, but this thing in the inside. Right here on the outside, what he told me is a rubber piece. Right? This thing right here is rubber. It's made out of hard rubber. And what happens, he says that when you engage your clutch, this shrinks and turns this pulley, which is for the, the compressor. But what happens is when it gets hot, instead of, instead of the, like if the clutch goes out, then this thing will just turn and it'll just cut your, your belt, right? So what happens when, when this gets hot, it doesn't, it melts. That's what he's like. It, 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 it kind of melts and then it loosens up and therefore it doesn't engage and your compressor doesn't work but the clutch is still working so I won't get hot air and then he went to the history of how the Japanese did it on their Honda Civics or something like back in the, the 90s or early 2000s but anyway the whole point of the matter was that whole point that I just glossed over right there which is the fact that when the truck is hot, when the engine is hot, I should say, it's, it's like a, a safety. It's like a safety thing because I'm starting to, I'm about to cut on the AC, make sure it works. Because I was hoping, man, I was hoping really, really bad that uh, if I just let it sit overnight, that it will work. All right, so let's go look at it right quick. So that might have been what he was talking about. Is this? No, that's metal, because that's right on the outside. That's the, the foam, the rubber part right here. That's the part that feels like, that's the whole clutch. All right, <clears throat> let's do this again. So, 
This is what I want to tell you guys. We got a T680 Packard MX13. <clears throat> and this, I got this in 2016 of March. But it says it's a 2017 truck. I'm trying to find it on here. Data manufacturer. They didn't manufacture 2016, but I could have sworn it was something that said it was a 2017. Anyway, so if you have a 2016 T680, I got this in March, but it was made in February. I know this is specific, MX13. If your AC compressor is working and you're not getting cold air, Turn off your truck, let it cool down, start it up, like let's say, turn it off after like, let it sit for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, like take a 30 minute break, cut it off, put it back on, engage the AC, and see if you get cold out. It worked for me. Anyway, I gotta go get my Pepsi and I'm gonna holler at you guys later. One more thing I forgot to tell you. This is the part number for the AC compressor. It is Foxtrot 69-1018. That's the AC compressor.